Namaskar friends. We encounter a lot of proactive parents who have introduced oral hygiene practices for their little ones. After interacting with you all, we have come to realize certain shortfalls due to misinformation through social media and from your healthcare provider. Your efforts should pay dividends in improving your child's oral health and not go in vain. So let's address each error one at a time. The most common mistake is rinsing after brushing. Your toothpaste has a lot of beneficial components, one of them being fluoride. Although high concentration of topical fluoride varnishes are done by a pediatric dentist at regular intervals, depending on your child's risk assessment, however, by not rinsing, your child can reap benefits of daily top-up of low fluoride concentration available through your child's toothpaste. Now this generation of millennial parents always feels gratified to see their child become independent. However, we would recommend to follow the shoelace concept and actively supervise your child's brushing with regards to how and how long they brush their teeth. Make sure they are brushing no less than 2 minutes with daily improvements in their brushing strokes. We have a lot of parents inspired by organic, natural toothpastes, but none beats the beneficial preventive properties of fluorides in your toothpaste. This is endorsed by the American and the European guidelines on your child's oral health. It's one of the key strategies to prevent cavities via remineralization and by improving your child's tooth resistance to any further dissolution or breakdowns. Gone are the days when non-fluoridated toothpastes were used. The current guidelines say toothpaste with no less than 1000 parts per million should be used for your child. How much to use is more important. For a child with special healthcare needs, those undergoing orthodontic treatment and children who have high caries risk, this concentration can go up to 5000 parts per million. Your brushing cleans only the top surfaces and we have parents endorsing their efforts strongly and asking why didn't my child get these cavities. One key component besides brushing, tongue cleaning is the use of interdental floss with handles to be used once before the child goes off to sleep. First thing first. Avoid these sugary acidic drinks. However, in case your child does drink these, make sure not to brush immediately as you may add on to the damage. Please avoid using toothpaste onto the entire length of the toothbrush. For a fluoridated toothpaste, you may use a rice grain if your child is less than 3 years of age and you may use a pea size if your child is able to expectorate or spit outside. We request overprotective parents to refrain from using ultra soft toothbrushes since their capacity to disrupt the plaque is compromised. Use a medium soft toothbrush for your child. Consult a pediatric dentist and although brushing may be painful during these times, make sure your child understands the reason for these unhealthy gums was basically improper brushing from his end. So keep brushing gently or at least get a professional cleanup done for your child from a pediatric dentist. So many parents ask us which is the best toothpaste. So let us bust the myth today. Any toothpaste with adequate fluoride based on your child's risk assessment is good for your child. The quantity that you use is age related, which we've already touched based upon. So concentrate more on 
from brushing well rather than which toothpaste. So dear parents, let's follow the rule of two. Brush twice daily, brush no less than two minutes and brush as soon as the first tooth appears. Thank you.